What's going on guys? Welcome to the very first video of 2021. My name is Danny. Welcome to Paleo Aquatics. Before we get started, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed. Uh, hit the uh, thumbs up button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Definitely appreciate all the likes and uh, views from you guys. So first off, let's get this out of the way because obviously you guys see uh, the thumbnail and then you guys also see the new fish in the tank here. Uh, I did get uh, two new tangs. They were in quarantine last year for about a month and a half. Uh, after the quarantine process, I was able to put them into this tank here. And this tank is going to be a temporary tank for these tanks, actually all these fish to be honest, uh, until I make plans to get a larger tank uh, in the near future. Uh, and then we'll put all these fish into that bigger tank. So uh, think of this tank as a second quarantine tank but it's going to be a little bit more extended than the, your typical you know uh, month and a half quarantine outside and the quarantine tank outside is like you know only a 10 or a 20 gallon tank it's a lot smaller so they don't really have much room to swim around it's really uh to make sure that they don't have any diseases or whatnot anyways i'm, I'm rambling on but that's probably for another video but back to the reef tank here so uh, i got a koi tang and a purple tang now the koi tang has a tri-color pattern to it uh, it comes in like a lot of variety a lot of different colors uh it's not a cheap fish but definitely it's a fish worth adding to your addition if it's within your budget and when I saw the specific tang, I kind of like was drawn to it just because the cool like yellow it has, the cool blue, and a little bit of like the black that was also in the tang. And just the combination of colors is just really unique. So, and I knew I had to have a koi tang in the tank at some point. And so uh, I was able to pick this guy up. And yes, it was still pricey, but I did get it for a pretty decent deal. Uh, nevertheless now the purple tang nearly not as pricey as the koi tang but still it is a pretty pricey uh, tang if you were to go to any of your local fish store I believe they run from anywhere from like 150 to 200 uh, in that range is what I've seen them at uh, but these guys are like super super cool I, I really like the purple the purple is just crazy you know you don't really see purple fish you know I actually had a purple tang like two years ago. Um, unfortunately, it didn't make it because I had hole in the head disease. You know, when I kept that fish, I really enjoy it just kind of spreading around the colors. Um, I, I knew I needed to pick another one up in the future. And luckily, I came across this little guy for like dirt cheap, guys. Like dirt cheap. Um, so I picked him up. You know, I'm really happy. He's eating really well. Unfortunately, he is getting a little fin nipped from the bigger uh, tang and you know unfortunately that's what tangs do uh, there'll be an alpha and then the rest will just kind of be you know <laughs> the betas uh, and the smaller of the pack there now that we got a quick intro on the fish the main topic is how I'm actually treating uh, for ick on an established tank now this tank's been up for a while it has you know other livestock corals etc in there and uh, treating for ick it can be very hard, especially if you have corals and other stuff in there. Any new fish I, got, I get I, goes into quarantine, no matter what. It goes into a quarantine for like a month and a half. I treat every fish with copper. Now, when this tank was set up, the first two fish that was in here were the clownfish. And actually, the clownfish did show some sign of ick, but they got rid of ick really fast. So I knew that even though the clownfish were immune to ick, uh, in this tank, I knew the tank probably had it right, and because the tank was already established with coral, uh, I couldn't really treat the full you know tank. Uh, when I added all these other new fish in here, even though they went through quarantine, they went through the ick process, they were ick free. But by adding them into a tank that I knew had ick at some point, that means that they still have a potential of getting it. Now, what I do in an established tank uh, to try to uh, treat for ick is. Uh, a UV sterilizer. Um, this is probably the best way to control the ick population and probably to fend off, you know, 99% of the ick. When I added the blue tang, you know, several months back, uh, it was doing fine. And then maybe a couple of days later, I saw like one spot of ick. Now, tangs are prone to getting ick. But the really good thing about the blue tang, uh, especially the one I have, it's a monster eater. Like you can see it, you know, in this video, uh, it just runs like crazy. It eats like crazy. So I know that it's getting the right food, the right nutrition 
Um, so the immune system on the blue tang is really beefy. Uh, when I saw the one, you know, dot of ick, it started, you know, getting a little bit more, but, you know, it didn't really bother the tang as much. Uh, it was still eating, it was still doing its thing. So um, I decided to just quickly hook up a UV sterilizer into the tank. Now, this tank wasn't set up or designed to have a UV sterilizer uh, built in. I should have probably done that uh, a while back when I set this up, but um, I knew that this tank would probably go in flux in terms of changing um, and I didn't really want to do that just quite yet. So I have this UV sterilizer that basically gets pumped from the main display, goes to the UV sterilizer, and gets flown back into the main display because a majority of the water uh, is in the main display. Originally, I had this mini setup down in the sump uh, where it kind of pumps from one of the chambers and goes straight into the return. Uh, but I figured that, you know, it's not really getting a majority of it, especially if like a fish has ick, um, let's say the ick drops, but it drops in the main display and that ick is just swimming in the main display. Sure, some of it will get into overflow and go down to the sump, but you know, 90% of it is in the main display. So I decided, you know, just let's go ahead and hook it up like this. It'll get, you know, majority of the main display. And, you know, after a few days, you know, the blue tang looks like, you know, it, the white spots are going away. And really, right now, I'm hoping to kill as many of those guys uh, while they're floating as possible. Um, and then it'll probably go through a couple more cycles, and we'll kind of keep that in control. Uh, we'll let, you know, the UV sterilizer run 24 hours for probably a few months. And we'll see how the fish uh, reacts to, you know, the egg afterwards, right? So if uh, in a couple weeks to a couple months here, uh, if we don't see any more ick, then we know that the UV sterilizer has done its thing and or uh, the fish has developed an immune system that helps prevent that ick. Again, the tangs are just way more susceptible. You know, the clownfish could have had ick, you know, throughout <laughs> its whole life in this tank uh, without me really knowing um, because, you know, they were immune to it. So that's how you can treat ick without having to really dose uh, any chemicals into the tank, especially established tanks. Uh, you kind of don't want to do that. The corals could be really finicky. Um, and you can actually kill, kill the corals, especially if you introduce copper into the tank. So you don't want to do that. So in the meantime, as I'm quarantining new uh, fish that will go into the larger tank in the future here, uh, they'll go into the small quarantine tank. Uh, I can only really fit maybe like two, maybe three at a time. Maybe two really is like the max. You know, go through like the month and a half. And then from that quarantine, I can put them into this temporary bigger display tank. Let them kind of swim around, do this thing, you know, get fat. Uh, <laughs> enjoy uh, a little bit more, you know, room to kind of just swim around um, for the time being. And I can, that way I could bring in um, some other fish, uh, quarantine them, just make sure everything's okay. And then when I have all the fish that I want for the big tank, quarantine, happy, and just on all these tanks, uh, we'll start figuring out how to uh, bring in this uh, bigger tank into uh, the picture here. All right, guys, and that is it for the video. If you guys are not subscribed yet, make sure you guys subscribe. And like always, till next time, guys, peace.